My name is Maidiane Andrade, and this is some of what we do in my lab at the University of Toronto Scarborough, where we work on black widow spiders. I'm not an entomologist, I'm an arachnologist, which means I work on spiders. And these black widows I rear in my lab for the use in ecology, evolution, and behavior experiments, like this adult female and this adult male who are about to mate. But before we get to the stage where we can use them for our experiments, we have to rear them. And spiderlings are produced by the hundreds by females in little balls called egg sacs that they produce about once a month. We keep them in separate cages after they get to a decent size and we feed them live prey. Spiders will only eat live prey. And so they build little webs inside these cages. We feed them fruit flies, we feed them mealworms, and we feed them crickets. So that means my lab is full of creepy crawlies. And I do have insects there, even though they really are just for the jaws of the spider. This is a student feeding spiders on a shift. She's wearing gloves because the spiders do produce a neurotoxin that is dangerous to humans. And we wanna make sure everyone's safe. To keep the lab running, I need to have between 10 and 15 undergraduates working to help raise the thousands of spiders we use in our experiments. I also have graduate students and postdocs who are leading the research efforts. Most of the research occurs in the dark because these black widow spiders are nocturnal, which means that in the lab we have rooms in which we can reverse the photo period so that they're active when we are there during the day. And spiders don't see very well um, at all, <laughs> and they don't see very well in, in red light. So we can have cameras like you see here that are able to um, focus in the dark uh, as long as there's red light there. So this is my student Nishant and I setting up for some experiments. And we have these cameras that allow us, uh, together with zoom lenses, to focus in on these spiders, which are fairly small, because we need to see the details of the mating. Females are put in containers that contain water, and they build their webs on little frames that sit in the water, and that way it's like they're on an island. They can't get across the water bath, and so they're constrained onto the frames where we put them, and they build their webs there. We can focus on them from above and get a good picture of what's going on with the matings. These rooms are fairly warm. The spiders do like warm temperatures. Um, and we use forceps or tweezers to put them into these, um, these arenas and to take them out. So we're very careful about how we manipulate uh, the spiders. They generally have a fairly good life. They're well fed. <laughs> they get to mate. Um, but what we do is manipulate things like the conditions under which they um, develop and ask different things about their diet, about their social behavior, um, and also um, how that affects their mating. And then in the field, we also do work where we ask about how those things play out in a larger landscape where the um, conditions might vary in a, in a lot of different ways. So once we've set up the experiments, we can go outside into the main lab where we have this monitor that allows us to watch multiple arenas simultaneously. That way we can see what's, how the trials are progressing without actually being in the room to disrupt the spiders. In addition to that, it's great to be able to use these spiders in classrooms. So this is um, a setup for a class in which we allowed undergraduates to come up with their own hypotheses about spider behavior. So in this case, they were interested in what would happen if more than one male was competing to mate with the same female, where one male is bigger than the other. And so we set up these experiments that, where they could watch that happen. Now, watching spiders mate or depending on spiders to mate for your experimental data can be challenging because at least for black widows, the mating behavior can be quite prolonged. And this is a male courting a female and what you can see is um, they do a lot of things that really don't have, appear to have much to do with the female, but, but they actually do. They're producing signals that are detected by the female um, and essentially prevent the female from cannibalizing them. But this can go on for hours. So let's jump ahead in some of these experiments with two males competing for a female. And what you can see is that they will actually engage in what we call fatal fighting. One male here is biting a second male who had begun to mate and that second male dies as a result. This kind of thing is not seen that often in nature, so this is really an interesting opportunity to ask about high-stakes mating. 
So that's a feel for the kinds of things that go on in my lab, the kinds of things we do with undergraduate students, helping with our research, but also bringing some of our research into the classroom. I hope to see you in Toronto sometime soon.